Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to give you some top tips on how to prep for hand quilting. So we did this as a tutorial a few weeks ago and lots of you said that you'd like to see circles on it for quilting. So I'm going to hand quilt it. Now when you have a piece that you hand quilt, you often take it to your quilt group or you move it from one place to another. So the first thing I want to do is to make sure it doesn't get grubby around the edges and also that these don't fray. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim it a little bit and then I'm going to fold it over like I've done here and just tack it so that my border doesn't fray. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I'm just going to snip along here and I'm just leaving about half an inch to an inch and then I'm going to tack it so you can see that I've already done that so I've got a big needle and a length of thread and I'm just going to put a knot in the end of my thread and I'm going to fold it over and run a tacking stitch but because I'm left-handed I'm going to go from this side so I'm just folding it over and I'm just going to run a big tacking stitch all the way along so that I'm protecting the border of the quilt. So once you've tacked all around your quilt to stop the edges fraying, I'm now going to look at what size circles I want on the quilt. And I've got plates here because it's great if you use these plates to draw around to get lovely circles. So I've got two different sizes here and I'm just going to place them over my square blocks and I'm deciding at this point which size I like best. Now I could do them all the same size and if I do that I've got to make sure that it's perfectly lined up. So I quite like doing random, I quite like doing the two sizes so some of the blocks will have a bigger circle, some of them will have a smaller circle. It could be that you put a big circle in the blues and then where you've got some white, say here, you do a smaller circle. So it's just a case of laying it out and having a look and see what you like. So what I generally do is I put the plates where I want them and then I mark the quilt. So I'm using an iron off marker. So I'm going to draw around the quilts and that's going to be my quilt, sorry. I'm going to draw around the plates and that's going to be my line for quilting. So I'm just going round like this and I would mark the whole quilt. I wouldn't just mark one at a time. So while it's laid out lovely and flat like this, I'll get the whole thing done. So that's my line for that one. I might decide that my next one is going to be a bigger plate. So I draw around that. and so on. I would do the whole quilt marking it up. It may be that as I do it, I decide, oh, I'm going to put some there. And the great thing with this is because it's an iron off marker, once I've got it all drawn and I look at the whole thing and I think, oh, actually, I might not want that one there. I'll just iron it off and I'll put the smaller one there. So I tend to mark the whole thing and then I look at it before I start. So the next thing we need to think about is our quilting thread. And as it's hand quilting, I'm using the Gutemann quilting thread. And this is slightly thicker. This is not something you'd use in your sewing machine. This is for hand quilting. It's slightly thicker and it's waxed. It's got very, very fine wax coating. So it makes it easier when you're doing your hand quilting. 
So I'm undecided whether to go with this grey or the cream or this very pale sandy colour. So I'm just unrolling them all a little bit and just laying them on the quilt. So it depends how much you want your hand quilting to notice. It also depends how good you are at hand quilting. And if like me, you're a little bit wonky, you probably don't want it to show too much. So I actually think I'm gonna opt for the pale gray instead of the other colors, because um, that one shows up least of all. And I think that one's gonna be more forgiving for me. So I'm just gonna pop the other two away. You will need a quilting needle. Now, quilting needles are much, much smaller. And I'm going to get Josh to do a close up of this one in my hand so you can see just how small it is. So you want a nice, short needle with a big eye, so a proper quilting needle. And then I'm going to show you how to do the knot at the end. So you put your thread on top of a needle and hold it and then you go once twice round your needle and then slide it off right to the end so there's a tiny tiny knot I don't know if you can see that there and that's how we're going to start and you can see that I've left a tail because when I start to put this in the back of the quilt I'm going to pull the tail through with the needle so I've left a little tail past the knot and I'm going to pull that in so that tail is going to disappear behind the layer on the back of the quilt. And then you do a very small running stitch in and out following the line of your quilting and you try to have your gap the same size as the front of your stitch. And it's just something that takes practice, but it's lovely to do. It's really relaxing and it's great that you can take your quilt with you and you can sit and do a bit of hand quilting. So I hope you found this useful. As always, have fun and I look forward to seeing you next time here in the sewing studio.